This is a brief video on functional pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. These tumors are also called islet cell tumors because they arise from the endocrine pancreas or the islet cells, the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas, and they actively secrete hormones to have systemic effects. We're going to be talking about gastronomas, insulinomas, glucagonomas, VIPomas, and somatostatinomas. Here we have an image of salt and pepper chromatin, which is indicative of neuroendocrine differentiation, not necessarily specific to a neuroendocrine tumor and not necessarily specific to one of these five neuroendocrine tumors, but still shows neuroendocrine differentiation nonetheless. So let's start talking about a gastronoma. Gastronoma is the second most common P-net. It's by definition a gastrin secreting tumor of the endocrine pancreas, and it can also occur in the duodenum in the GI tract. So those are the two places you might see a gastronoma. Gastrin, of course, induces gastric acid secretion. It's a hormone that induces gastric acid secretion. Gastrin normally comes from the G cells that are not found in the endocrine pancreas. Uh, so it's a little strange that they're there, but uh, the cells in the endocrine pancreas can develop gastrin and form a gastrinoma. These, uh, this exogenous or this endogenous production of gastrin causes recurrent ulcers in the stomach, duodenum, and jejunum, and usually don't get ulcers as far down as the jejunum. So having ulcers down there can be a sign of a gastrinoma. It's a little more specific than ulcers in the stomach and the duodenum for gastrinoma. These ulcers typically don't respond to conventional therapy um, that, you would, that you would give for normal stomach ulcers, not as a result of gastrinoma. Patients present with abdominal pain and diarrhea, and these gastrinomas cannot be suppressed by secretin, which normally inhibits gastrin release. Uh, and you also see high blood gastrin levels to diagnose. You can treat gastrinomas with somatostatin. The synthetic form of somatostatin is called octreotide. You can also surgically resect the parts of the endocrine pancreas that are secreting gastrin. These collection of symptoms is called Zollinger Ellison syndrome, and that's kind of a word that you should associate with gastronoma or abnormal secretion of gastrin. Next we have insulinomas. Insulinomas are the most common peanut. They are by definition insulin secreting tumors of the endocrine pancreas, and they specifically come from the beta cells of the endocrine pancreas. They present with hypoglycemia symptoms because you have too much insulin being released. And these symptoms include hunger, nervousness, sweating, lethargy, confusion, and coma. To uh, know if you have a lot of insulin going on, to know if you have hypoglycemia going on, you can also you can often refer to Whipple's triad, which is three symptoms, three, three, three categories, three criteria you must meet to know that you have too much insulin as a result of your hypoglycemia. Uh, these three criteria are that you have hypoglycemia by blood test. That's a sugar below 55. You have symptoms of hypoglycemia, like those listed above, hunger, nervousness, sweating, progressing to lethargy, confusion, coma. And these symptoms should correct with administration of glucose. Um, these three criteria can be met to know that you have Whipple's triad, which tells you that you have hypoglycemia, in this case, as a result of insulinoma. Blood work for a person with insulinoma shows low glucose, high insulin, and high C-peptide. This last one, high C-peptide, is important because it allows you to rule out exogenous use of insulin, exogenous injection of insulin, which would present with low glucose, high insulin, and low C-peptide. So that last one's a differentiating factor. On the pathology, you usually see small cells, and you can treat insulinoma with surgical resection. Next up is glucagonoma which is a rare tumor, it's often malignant. It's by definition a glucagon secreting tumor of the endocrine pancreas, this time coming from the alpha cells of the endocrine pancreas. Blood work here shows increased glucagon, as you might expect, and often increased glucose as a result of that hormone. Glucagonoma presents with a bunch of Ds. You get mild diabetes, you get dermatitis. This is a dermatitic rash called neuroleptic migratory erythema, commonly seen around the groin area, nasty looking rash. You see decreased weight. You see decreased red blood cells or anemia. You also see venous thrombosis or deep vein thrombosis, DBT. So a bunch of Ds um, indicate glucagonoma. You can treat this one also with somatostatin or octreotide or surgical resection. Next is VIPoma. 
This is also known as Werner Morrison syndrome, same collection of symptoms. Rare tumor, most are malignant. The VIP OMA is by definition a VIP secreting tumor of the endocrine pancreas, this time coming from the D1 cells. Now let's remind ourselves that vasoactive intestinal peptide VIP is a hormone and its normal role in the gut is to stimulate secretion of water and electrolytes. So we can imagine that somebody with a VIP OMA, somebody with too much VIP is going to present with ex with explosive and profuse watery diarrhea. If you have excessive secretion of water and electrolytes into the gut, you're going to get explosive watery diarrhea. This results in low hydrochloric acid, low potassium, and also dehydration. All of that makes sense too. Lastly, we have somatostatinoma, also a rare tumor. Most of these are also malignant. Somatostatin is secreted from these tumors of the endocrine pancreas. That's the definition of somatostatinoma. This time it comes from the D or delta cells. So insulinoma came from the beta cells, glucagonoma came from the alpha cells, VIPoma came from the D1 cells, so metastatinoma comes from the D cells. So metastatin inhibits a bunch of hormones throughout the body, including gastrin, cholecystokinin, secretin, motilin, VIP, GIP, and enteroglucagon. So, so metastatin is known as the universal inhibitor and inhibits a bunch of stuff. So because of that, it can present with a, with a variety of symptoms, including mild diabetes, gallstones, steatorrhea, and hypochlorhydria, which is, again, low HCL. To treat this one, you use metastatin to try to reverse the effects. It's also worth mentioning some less common peanuts that you might find in the body. These include ACTH OMA, CRH OMA, calcitonin OMA, CHRH OMA, CRF OMA, parathyroid hormone related peptide tumors. These are tumors that secrete a peptide that kind of acts like PTH called PTHRP, parathyroid hormone related tumor. And lastly, here's a slide to review from Wikipedia, a very helpful slide that tells you about the multiple endocrine neoplasias that uh, might be relevant to some of these exocrine or these, some, some of these endocrine tumors. These would mostly fit in with the pancreatic tumors of MEN1. And uh, that's, that's a, an association worth knowing for most of these endocrine tumors. This has been a review of endocrine tumors. I hope it was helpful and thank you for listening.